Alright friends, let's go over an Illustrator tutorial and I just want to go over um, a special feature, I guess you might call it, called Expand. Um, it's something that people struggle with a little bit, so I'm hoping that this tutorial will really help you to understand that a little bit better. Um, first off, if you'd like to use the same font that I'm using, it's called News of the World. And I'm going to pop over here real quickly so you can see it. I downloaded it from 1001fonts.com. And um, you definitely want to be sure when you download it that you install the regular and the italics version of that font. So once you extract it, be sure to install both. We need the italics version in order to do this exercise. So um, I've got that font installed. And News of the World is the font. And once you make a text box and put it in there, I have it set to 200, which is, is pretty big. Um, you can bring up your character panel, just push the button here, or you can open it. And you'll probably want to mess here a little bit with the tracking, because the letters are normally set at zero, and they're pretty close together. So you might want to space them out just a little bit. Um, you know, 10, 25, 50, I don't know, up to you. Um, but anyway, so there's the font. Um, that's the easy part. <laughs> but what we're going to do, and I found this, this is a logo I found online for a uh, sports team called the Bullets and they tried to make these L's look like hands and then there's a basketball which sounds pretty easy I guess if you look at it but to create that so the basketball is a uh, clip art if you will you kind of have to go through a process you can see here that my lines are cut out of the ball and that's kind of a big deal because I want this to not be white but rather to be see-through. Okay, so when we put the logo on something, we don't want white lines there. I just want those to be cut out. All right, so how would we go about doing that? There's a couple of, of ways to do it, and I'm going to show you the way that I think is the most efficient. So I'm first going to create half of the ball, because essentially that ball is a mirror of itself. And so we don't have to do double work. I'm going to grab my ellipse tool. Um, really doesn't matter here on, on any of this stuff. I'm just going to give it a a fill and no stroke and I'm going to draw, draw my ball. If you want to make it perfect circle hold shift and there we go. Then I'm going to take a rectangle I'm going to make it a different color just for fun or uh, well I guess I won't <laughs> and then uh, we're going to cut this guy so you're just going to kind of cut right there so cover up half of it then we will choose both rectangle is on top and then let's use under your pathfinder, we're going to use your minus front so that we have our oval here for this half of the ball. So that means the only other things we have to do are to cut out these holes. So how would I go about doing that? Um, uh, you know I'm going to go to the pen tool here. So I'm going to click on the pen tool. And I don't want to fill on my pen tool as I'm drawing here. So um, what you will want, though, is a stroke. So we want to actually be able to see some color here. So let me get, I can't quite get to the button. There we go. All right, so I'm going to click up here, kind of just outside here, and then click again here, but click and drag on that second click. So I'll click, come down here, and click and drag. Oops, I didn't click up there, but anyway, okay. It doesn't really matter what it looks like because you could fix it. Now, once you're done, if you hold down Control and click off of the path, then it sits it down. Uh, then we can edit it. So wide arrow tool to edit, uh, and then I can fix this to be however I want it to be. And I've got some weird kind of thing going on down here. So let's flip this around so it's like the right way. All right, and get the angle that you want. And then we're going to make this really thick. Oops. So to make it thick, we're just going to modify that stroke and make that stroke much bigger um, than what it currently is. Let me modify this just a little bit more. So it's a little more even. Okay, so come up here, black arrow tool, click on the path. Um, make sure you're on the path and then stroke let's go with about uh, 14 and you can just leave it black now here's the problem you already know how to subtract the front but if we take this and we try to minus front that happens and that's not what we want so I'm gonna undo and the reason is because when you draw a pin shape that's just, just straight or even if you use the line tool which you could have done and we will in a minute it creates a stroked path. And what I mean is if, if I sit here and do this, well, that's not a good color. This is actually the fill on here. So that's why it cut out the whole thing. But I only want to cut out that line. So what I'm going to do is turn the stroke or turn the fill off because I don't want to fill this. 
And then we have to turn this into a shape. Basically, we're turning it into a wavy rectangle. So I'm going to go to Object and Expand. And I want to expand. You could put both of them on. There is no fill, but I want to expand that stroke. So I'm going to hit OK. And now my stroke is expanded. See how now there's points around the edges of it? And before there was a line in the middle. Okay. Now that it's expanded, and sometimes, by the way, I have to do this more than once. So if you have to do it more than once, just go click it again. It's not going to hurt anything. All right. And then we select both items and minus that front off. And that should be nice and good. One thing that Photoshop does automatically, or Illustrator does automatically, is it groups this. So this is all a group. Now, in order to put the next cut in, I need to get inside the group. Because you cannot cut on a grouped shape. And what I mean by, here, I'll do it and show you. I'll mess it up on purpose just for you. Um, so if I take and draw another line, like kind of like what we're going to need here, like this. And then I go ahead and make it black and I make it size 14 like the other to match. And then I try to minus the front on it. That happens. See, that's all kinds of messed up. So, and that's because there's like a grouped shape. So it kind of got rid of this other shape. And I don't even know what happened to the other one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get grab a hold of this guy. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to get inside the ball because I need to get to just this chunk because these are grouped. So double click and click only on this one. So when you're doing these cutouts, you got to think about what you need to cut it out of and you got to isolate it. I'm in isolation mode so that you're all the way in. So I'm going to go ahead now that I'm in here. I'm going to paste in my, my line. Now remember, I need to expand it so that it's a shape instead of a little stroke. So object expand. And again, you could just expand stroke if you want. Hit OK. Sometimes again, you got to do it a second time. So I usually just do it anyway. Now I can grab a hold of these two items and minus that front. So we're good to go. Although I didn't really make that very straight. I probably should have put that somewhere up towards the top. It's fine. Okay, now while we're still in here, I'm going to go ahead and select all of the pieces and right click and transform. And we're going to reflect it so that we have the other side of our ball. And you want to reflect it vertically. Just hit copy and it'll give us that other side. And then I can use my arrow keys to scoot it over or I can pick it up and move it. Oops as well. It'll already be grouped because we copied and pasted it. Alright, now I'm still in isolation mode, so I'm going to go back out to the document, and now I have my ball. It's not, this side is grouped, and this side is grouped, but the whole thing isn't. So at this point, we'll just kind of grab both of them, right click, and group. So now I have the ball. I'll just size that down. And then here's my words. Now, I need to make these little hands, and that's going to be a pen tool thing, as much as you don't want it to be. Um, I'm going to cheat. You won't really be able to, I guess, unless you can find some hands to trace. Um, let me go back out to my layer. So, you're basically going to click and create these points to, to kind of make these hands. And I've done a, I did one of these freehand, and the other one I actually traced, but it's not too bad. And they don't have to go all the way down, but, so I'm going to click come up to about the wrist area, click and drag, and that's going to give you these handles. And just make your handle kind of follow the line of where you want that hand to go. That top handle is going to follow that line, okay? Then come up to where it goes around the bend a little bit, just, just a little bit around that bend. I go about halfway usually. And then click and drag up. Okay, so it's kind of following that. You can always add extra points in later. Now here's my problem. Now to match that bottom line, I'm not able to make my top line follow the new path. So this is where, and ignore the fill, this is where I'm going to grab this handle, holding down the Alt key, to turn it. Okay? Now that didn't draw anything, that just adjusted the handle. And now I can come up here, actually I'm going to go ahead and go around the bend, and my click and drag. And then I can kind of create that little pointy part. Okay? Same thing, this is now facing the wrong direction. So I'm going to hold down Alt on that handle, to kind of force it to go this other direction and then come to the other side of my loop. Or you could just go halfway. You could go like here. I'll go here. All right. You can see there's my line. It, wrote, it went pretty nicely there. Okay. And then the next one is probably not going to not gonna go. So again, I'm going to hold down Alt a little bit and just kind of shape this that way a little bit. You don't have to do this now. You could do it later. It's just kind of up to you. Then I let go of Alt and I can continue to draw. I'm just going to let this one go where it goes. I'm going to come to the wrist and click and drag down. There we go. 
Now this one is definitely going to have to come down this direction to be right. So I'm going to hold down Alt. Anytime you have a, a corner, you're definitely going to want to do it. All right, and now I can come down here and click somewhere. All right, and then I'm going to seal it off. All right, so, I mean, they look more like wrenches, but I guess that's okay for this. Uh, so I've got that one. And then to make the other one, you could do the same thing. You could go ahead and just reflect it if you wanted to. Probably, though, this one isn't supposed to be an identical match. But, you know, if you just size it down some and don't keep it proportional, they may not look identical. You could always go in here and delete a point or change um, the line a little bit. So I could come in here with, um, like, click on this one maybe and just modify these handles a little bit. So this one doesn't look just perfectly carbon copy to the other one. And now if you're, if you're getting a point and you don't want a point, like there, um, just take your little convert point tool and click on it to get you a nice little round point. There we go. Now they don't really look anything alike anymore. Okay, so I've got two different little hands here. All right, I'm going to come up here and attach these to my letters. Now, to attach to letters, letters have to be shapes. They can't be letters anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and make these bigger. And then I'm going to drag one of these sort of into place. It's not the right size yet. That's okay. We'll fix it in a minute. And then on the example, the second letter is a little bit short. So let me go ahead and convert these letters to not be letters. So to do that, you just right-click your type and you go to Create Outlines. Um, the only other problem you're going to run into is they're grouped. So let's right click and ungroup and click off. So now you can select one. And I'm going to chop off part of this L. So I'm just going to take my knife tool. It hides under the eraser if you don't see yours. And I'm just, you start outside the letter, but not on this letter. And you just slice. And it doesn't really matter how much you slice. I just need to slice some off. So I'm going to click and drag across like so. Then come back out to your black arrow to click off and click on and then press delete. Okay, now I can take the other one. I'm going to rotate it around here while I'm on my move tool. So it kind of goes the other direction. And now I can take my white arrow tool to grab a hold of these points. I'll click on a point and then kind of drag it wherever. And I could convert these points too and make them fit better, but I'm going to grab this one and do it. All right, so I'm going to try to make that match up as best I can. Oops and kind of do the same thing on this side. You can rotate it around. It has a fat arm there, but, uh, uh, and then same thing here. It, you could also just resize the hand. You know, you can just take it on the corners and make it bigger or fatter or whatever you want to do. Try to make it match more to the letter. Kind of making this a funny looking letter here, aren't I? Um, this point out a little bit. And again, if you need a rounded point where you're getting a corner, just take that convert point tool. Oops. Make sure you're clicking on the actual thing and not the pass. No, the bottom part doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. All right. Not the exact best thing ever, but let's say it's fine for now. All right. And then at this point, we need to turn all of this into one. So I'm going to grab a hold of these two pieces and we're going to union them grab a hold of these two pieces and we'll unite them as well. And then lastly, all you got to do really is put your ball into place and size it down. And there we go. My little wrenches. Um, probably I would size these down because they do look kind of funny. And you can always go back in and modify those paths. So even though I'm finished or technically finished, I could come back in here um, and modify it with the pen tool. Again, white arrow tool to modify selection. So, um, you know, if I want to come in here and mess with these a little bit more, I can do so. If I don't, you know, if that wrist is too high and I need to move it down, I can move these points. It's kind of hard sometimes to tell which ones are points and which ones are anchors. So you kind of have to mess with it a little bit. But move this little wrist. Oops undo that. I'll click here and move this wrist down. So we actually have a little more wrist on that one. Maybe I'll move in my edges a little bit. Now if you have a point you don't need, let's say I don't need that point, I can take my minus pin and just click on that point and get rid of it. And so forth. And there you go. And hopefully yours is the only thing on your document. So of course you can save and export. And then you would have a logo 
and uh, I always group them first. But the cool thing is that it has these cutouts and not just white lines because we did that expand. 